A very good evening aspirants welcome to Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar Ayes Academy for the date 23rd of May 2022 displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today see we have previous year prelims question discussion and after that we have four articles to discuss today and we'll end the discussion by solving some prelims questions without any delay let's get into the previous year prelims question discussion See this question here it is asked in the year 2019 the question says which of the following statements are correct about the deposits of methane hydrate statement 1 global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits statement 2 large deposits of methane hydrate are found in arctic tundra and under the sea floor statement 3 methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after a decade or two See for solving this question you don't have to know about methane hydrates you don't have to know about the signs of how it is formed and what are all the constituents of it you don't have to know anything about it you just have to use your common sense here see after reading the word hydrate we all know that it has something to do with water or ice or something so what will be the meaning of methane hydrate methane trapped under sea bed or methane inside ice precisely methane with the combination of ice or water so with this basic understanding now look at the statements global warming might trigger the release of methane gas from these deposits let us say hydrate means ice so what does this mean global warming will definitely melt ice if the ice is melted by the rise in the temperature then obviously the methane that is trapped inside those ice will get released right so statement 1 makes sense and it is right also now coming to statement 2 large deposits of methane hydrate are found in arctic tundra and under the sea floor see the second statement here is a fairly simple statement we saw hydrate means water or ice right that is exactly given in the statement also it is found in arctic tundra and under the sea floor so obviously second statement is also right now coming to the third statement methane in atmosphere oxidizes to carbon dioxide after a decade or two we have all studied the chemical formula for methane right what is it ch4 so methane present in atmosphere in the combination of oxygen gets converted to carbon dioxide so this statement is also right See by knowing the meaning of hydrate or taking an educated guess we solve this question. So what is the correct answer here? The correct answer is option D 1 2 and 3. I have given the meaning of methane hydrate its formation and other information about methane hydrates here. You please go through it. See it is very important to know all these information but what is more important? It is more important to know how to approach a question and how to solve a question. In this case we solved this question without even knowing about methane hydrate this is how you have to solve a question and it should be an educated guess and not a random one so with this note now let us move on to the next part which is the articles discussion now let us start our discussion by seeing this text in context article see this article is about LOC here i'm not talking about the line of control or the line of credit rather this is about lookout circulars See we are hearing this term often in news and you all would have seen in news that former chief of an NGO Amnesty International India Mr Akar Patel was stopped at airport and he was not allowed to travel abroad well he was stopped based on the lookout circular opened against him by an Indian authority like this in another case related to LOC Punjab High Court passed a set of instructions See these instructions include serving a copy of LOC to the affected person and also stating the reasons for issuing the same and the court also directed to provide a post decisional opportunity which is the opportunity provided to an individual to be heard after a tentative decision has been taken by the authorities see these instructions they were passed out by the Punjab High Court But now these instructions para has been stayed by the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court is looking into the matter. So it becomes important for us to understand what is LOC, its conditions and procedures followed and the arguments against it. Let us know all these now. But before that, the syllabus relevant to the article is given here for your reference. Please go through it. First of all, as the name suggests, through this circular, someone is looking out for someone. That is they are searching for someone. So LOC is a warning circular. 
Having said that, what will happen when LOC is opened? Or what is the purpose of LOC? See, LOC is issued where the accused was deliberately evading arrest or not appearing in the trial court despite non-bailable warrants and other coercive measures. See, here evading arrest means they are escaping arrest or not appearing in front of the court for trial. So, there is a likelihood of the accused person leaving the country to escape the trial or arrest. At such instance, through the lookout circulars, the immigration authorities can intercept, detain and prevent any person from leaving India. It prevents any convict or accused individual from absconding the country by travelling abroad. So, this is the purpose of the LOC. And the need for LOC arises because offenders like willful bank loan defaulters or fugitive economic offenders leave the country. And that is why the LOC is issued. We know about the case of Vijay Malaya and Mehul Choksi, right? They are the economic offenders who flew out of the country, thereby evading the law and conviction. So, to prevent such instances, LOC is issued. Therefore, LOC is a coercive measure intended to make a person surrender to the investing agency or a court of law. Here know that the person is detained or prevented from travelling abroad through the watch maintained at the immigration check post. Now with this basic understanding, let us see who is authorised to open or issue LOC. See, it is the Bureau of Immigration under the Ministry of Home Affairs. See, this bureau undertakes the immigration related function in the country and it does not open LOC out of thin air, which means it does not open LOC or issue LOC unnecessarily. Rather, LOC is opened on the request of an authorised originator. Who is an authorised originator? He or she is an authorised officer as noted by the Government of India. So, as of now, the authorised originator includes an officer not below the rank of Deputy Secretary to the Government of India, an officer not below the rank of Joint Secretary in the State Government, and he can also be a district magistrate, superintendent of police. It also includes designated officers of various law enforcing agencies and security agencies like CBI, Intelligence Bureau, RAW, Interpol, etc. And it includes an officer not below the rank of additional director in serious fraud investigation office, that is SFIO. See, SFIO is under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. And then it also includes officers of public sector bank who are not below the rank of chairman, managing director and chief executive of public sector banks. And other than these, LOC can also be issued as per the directions of any criminal court in India. So all these authorities, they are the authorized originator and they can make a request to the Bureau of Immigration to issue or open LOC. Now, once LOC is issued, it can be modified, deleted or withdrawn by the Bureau. And this can happen only on the specific request of the authorized originator on whose request the LOC was issued originally. So, the authorized originator, he has to request for issuing an LOC. He has to request again for any modification, deletion or withdrawal of LOC by the Bureau. Now, does that mean LOC can be opened against only Indian citizens? Actually, no. It can be issued against foreigners also. Why is this? See, this is because foreigners' entry, stay and their movement in India and their exit from India, all of these are regulated by Bureau of Immigration and also the police authorities of state government and union territories. Now, let us see the conditions for opening LOC. See, the conditions have been laid out by the Ministry of Home Affairs through two office memorandums. One in the year 1979, another in the year 2000, which was modified in the year 2010. See, many of these conditions have been clarified by the Supreme Court in the 2018 case law, Karthi P. Chidambaram vs. Bureau of Immigration. Now, let us see them. Firstly, what are they doing here? They are searching for someone, right? So, that person should have committed or is accused of committing an offence or crime. So, this is the first condition. LOC can be issued only in cognizable offences under the Indian Penal Code or other penal laws. Here, cognizable offence means offences in which accused can be arrested without a warrant. 
Now that is the first condition. Secondly, there is a prescribed proforma for opening LOC and that should be followed. Proforma also includes the reasons for opening LOC. If the proforma is not filled or the reason is not provided, then the person will not be arrested or detained. While arresting or detaining a person, he or she should be informed about the reasons. But they are not privy to the contents of LOC. That means they are not shown the contents of LOC. They can only be given the information about why they are detained or arrested. So this is the second condition. LOC should contain reasons for its opening. Now thirdly, LOC should include a complete identifying particular or parameters of the person against whom the LOC is opened. See, minimum three parameters should be there in addition to name. They are the parentage or the father's name, date of birth and passport number. But note that in exceptional cases against the suspects, terrorists, anti-national elements, etc., complete parameters or case details is not required in the larger national interest. So, this is about the basics of LOC. Now, let us see how long a particular LOC is valid. See, as per the practice, look out circular itself should clearly mention the period of validity. Otherwise, the circular is valid only for a period of one year from the date of issue. See, this was the practice based on 1979 and 2000 office memorandums. But later in the year 2018, the court fixed it as one year and it can be extended based on the request of the originator. But again in the year 2021, Ministry of Home Affairs issued a notice which states that no LOC shall be deleted automatically. That is, once an LOC is opened, it shall remain in force until and unless a deletion request is received by the Bureau from the originator. This would mean that the LOC is applicable for infinite period of time. Apart from making the LOC applicable for an infinite period of time, the notice also adds an additional responsibility to the originating agency to minimize the harassment of genuine passenger. What is the additional responsibility? It is to keep reviewing the LOC on quarterly and annual basis. And it has to submit a proposal when they want to delete the LOC. See, these are the conditions and procedure involved with the LOC. Now, it is opposed by many people because of certain reasons. Now, let us see what are those reasons. The first one is, it is opposed because it is subject to misuse. For example, no parameters to identify a person need to be provided if he or she is a suspected terrorist. So, automatically this leads to arbitrary detention, arrest based on race, ethnicity, religion, etc. So, this is one concern. Further, LOC is used as an inherent power of the investing authority to secure attendance and cooperation of an accused. See, what is the purpose of LOC? It is used when the accused is trying to evade arrest or when he is not appearing in front of the trial court. But LOC is used as a power by the authority to secure the attendance and cooperation which is not the purpose of LOC. So, this is the second concern. Now, thirdly, the number of persons and the crime for which they have been placed under LOC list is unknown. This is mainly because LOC is considered as a classified document. It is available only to the originator and the bureau and not to the accused or public. This is the third concern. And finally, and more importantly, LOC curtails the fundamental right of the life and personal liberty. This is because the right to leave or travel abroad and the right to return to India are considered to be a part of Article 21 of the Constitution. So, because of these reasons, many citizens have moved to courts to get the LOC quashed. So, now let us wait and see what guideline is provided by the Supreme Court in this matter. And with this, we have come to the end. So, in this article discussion, we saw what is LOC. See, it is abbreviated as Lookout Circular. As the name suggests, through this circular, someone is looking out for someone. They are searching. So, it is a warning circular. And after that, we saw the purpose. See, LOC is issued when the accused is deliberately escaping arrest or not appearing in front of trial court. So, it prevents the convict or the accused individual from absconding the country by travelling abroad. And it also prevents the economic offenders leaving the country. 
and after that we saw who is authorized to open loc we saw that bureau of immigration under the ministry of home affairs can issue or open loc but it is based on the request of an authorized originator and we saw a list of officers who are authorized to make a request to the bureau of immigration and after that we saw that the authorized originator has to make a request again if he wants the loc to be modified deleted or withdrawn by the bureau and after that we saw loc can be opened against foreigners also this is because foreigners entry stay movement and their exit from india they are all regulated by bureau of immigration and also the police authorities of state government and union territories and after this we saw some of the conditions for opening loc the first one is it can be issued only in cognizable offenses and the second one is a prescribed pro forma should be followed and it includes the reasons for opening loc and the third one is complete identifying particulars or parameters of the person against whom the loc is opened should be included apart from the name parents name or father's name date of birth passport number should also be included there is one exceptional case here if the suspect is a terrorist or it includes anti national elements this condition can be exempted and finally we saw how long loc is valid in the year 2021 ministry of home affairs issued a notice which states that loc shall not be deleted automatically so it is applicable for an infinite period of time but it also added an additional responsibility which is to keep reviewing the loc on quarterly and annual basis and after that we ended our discussion by seeing some of the reasons for the opposition against loc first one is it is subjected to misuse and second one is it is used as a power by the authority to secure attendance and cooperation the third one is the number of persons and the crime for which they are placed under loc list is unknown and finally it is a violation of the fundamental right of life and personal liberty which is article 21 of the constitution and with these points in mind now let us move on to the next article discussion now let us take up this news article for our next discussion see this news article states that our pm mr narendra modi will be participating in us president joseph biden's unveiling of the indo pacific economic framework in tokyo See this framework is a US initiative for trade partnerships in the region. So what is IPEF? It is a trade partnership. And Mr Modi's attendance at the event is seen as a significant step towards building economic ties among quad countries in the Indo-Pacific. I hope you remember what all countries constitute quad. See quad include United States, India, Japan and Australia. and this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us quickly go through some of the important points mentioned in this news article firstly we shall see a few points about what is this indo pacific economic framework as i already said ipef is a us initiative and it is nothing but a trade partnership in the indo pacific region see these are all facts here it is a us initiative and it is a trade partnership in the indo pacific region See, it is a partnership in which the US, along with its partners, will explore the opportunity for trade facilitation, standards for digital economy and technology, supply chain resiliency, decarbonisation, and clean energy, infrastructure, worker standards, and other areas of shared interest. So, these are all the areas concentrated by this initiative. So in simple words by looking at the way it is formulated you can easily say IPEF is not a traditional trade agreement like RCEP or TPP What is RCEP here it is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and TPP is Trans Pacific Partnership So it is nothing like that rather it would include different modules covering fair and resilient trade supply chain resilience infrastructure decarbonization tax and anti corruption say countries would have to sign up to all of the components within a module but they do not have to participate in all the modules so they have to sign it but they have the option of not participating it see the fair and resilient trade module will be led by the us trade representative and it includes digital labor and environment issues with some binding commitments And another major thing to note is that the IPEF will not include any market access commitments such as lowering the tariff barriers. And why is this? 
See, the agreement is more of an administrative arrangement. So that is why it will not include any market access commitments. And also note that the congressional approval, which is a must for trade agreements, is not mandatory for this. So it doesn't need any government approval. Now, apart from this, the IPEF is also seen as a means by which US is trying to regain credibility in the region. Why does it have to regain its credibility? Because the United States former president Donald Trump pulled out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. As you know, the Trans-Pacific Partnership was a proposed free trade agreement among 12 Pacific Rim economies, and US was its important member. But due to varied reasons, the US withdrew from the partnership in the year 2017, and since then there has been concern over the absence of credible US economy. So through this initiation. The Biden administration is projecting IPEF as the new US vehicle for re-engagement with East Asia and Southeast Asia. Here you may have a doubt. Does this initiative has any relevance to India? Of course it has. See the answer is very simple. Though the officials has denied it, the IPEF is seen as a trade strategy to counter China's economic influence in the Indo-Pacific region. And as you know, China is an influential member of the TPP, that is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and it has sought membership of its successor agreement, which is the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement on Trans-Pacific Partnership. And China is also a member of Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. But know that US and India is not a member of RCEP. So this IPEF is seen as a strategy to counter China's economic influence in the Indo-Pacific region. we don't know how it will turn out so we have to wait for the unveiling and see how this framework shapes out and with this we have come to the end of the discussion under this article discussion we saw about indo pacific economic framework which is a us initiative and it is a trade partnership in the indo pacific region and the areas of interest are trade facilitation digital economy and technology supply chain resiliency decarbonization clean energy infrastructure worker standards etc see countries have to sign up all the components within a module but it has the option of not participating it and we saw that it will not include market access commitments such as lowering tariff barriers because it is more of an administrative arrangement and also we saw that congressional approval is not mandatory for this initiative see this ipef is seen as an strategy to counter china's economic influence in the indo pacific region why is this because china has grown as an influential member of the tpp that is the trans pacific partnership and it has also sought membership of the comprehensive progressive agreement on trans pacific partnership and it is also a member of rcep but note that us is not a member of both of these So this IPEF will act as a vehicle for re-engagement with East Asia and Southeast Asia. And with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Now let us take up this next news article. See, this article says that there are signs that climate change is speeding up, and all you have to know about heat wave, heat index, and wet bulb globe temperature is given in this news article. So today, let's see them one by one. As you know. The Indian Meteorological Department does one of the biggest operations in the world and they track dozens of weather parameters. See it is tasked with forecasting southwest monsoon. Apart from this, the IMD factors long term data between 1981 to 2010 for normal temperature per day and it predicts the heat wave conditions accordingly. So here what is heat wave? qualitatively heat wave is a condition of air temperature which becomes fatal to human body when exposed but quantitatively it is defined based on the temperature thresholds over a region in terms of actual temperature or its departure from normal that is how much it is higher than the actual temperature see remember imd not only predicts heat waves it also issues warnings if the temperature is expected to cross 40 degree celsius in the case of plains or 30 degree celsius in the case of hilly areas for coastal regions it does so that is it issues warnings when the temperature is expected to be higher by 4.5 degrees or when the maximum temperature is above 37 degree celsius 
See, these conditions have to be met at two stations at a subdivision of IMD. And if this condition prevails, then heat wave is declared on the second day. So, this is how IMD issues warnings. See, the issue here is that the way the body perceives the heat differs from simply recording the temperature on a chart. This is because according to a 2021 paper in weather and climate extremes, as many as 17,362 persons died between 1970 and 2019 in India. You will be fascinated by knowing the reason. They died because of heat wave. And in 2015 alone, the figure was nearly 2000. See, every year, hundreds of people die due to heat wave conditions in the country, according to National Crime Records Bureau data. In the year 2020, the lowest number of 530 deaths were recorded, possibly due to COVID-19 lockdown and restrictions on work that year. But a large number of these deaths went unrecorded as a heat wave was not a notified disaster. See, this is due to the fact that real feel of temperature varies from place to place. That is the difference in ambient humidity which affects how the body sweats plays a major role. Having said that, now let us see how does the temperature influences body. See, the human body temperature which varies from 36.1 to 37.8 degrees Celsius is regulated by the hypothalamus which manages the production and loss of heat. See, the body loses heat by radiation, convection, conduction and evaporation of sweat. Conduction, radiation and convection require a temperature differential between the skin and the environment while the evaporation requires water vapor pressure differential. When the surrounding temperature is higher than the body temperature, the only way the body can cool down is by sweating, that is by evaporation. So, any condition that hampers, that is that disrupts the evaporation can be life-threatening. See, high relative humidity and reduced cardiac output, air circulation, that is lack of breeze, tight clothes, these could result in abnormal rise of body temperature that can result in life-threatening heat stroke. And this is how temperature influences body. And according to International Labour Organization, that is the ILO, India has been the worst victim of heat stress with the loss of 4.3% working hours in 1995 itself. See, heat stress occurs when the body cannot get rid of excess heat. When this happens, the body's core temperature rises and the heart rate also increases. See, so far we saw about what is a heat wave and how the temperature influences the body. Now, we shall see how heat stress is tracked. See, there are two methods which measure the impact of heat on human body better than just recording temperature. The first one is heat stress index which factors in the role of temperature, humidity, sunlight on human body. It measures how hot it feels when high humidity is combined with temperature, air circulation and radiant heat. The second one is wet bulb globe temperature that is WBGT. This measure is still in the prototype stage but it takes the heat stress into account to approximate the working environment. It measures the temperature in direct sunlight, factoring in the wind speed, humidity, angle of the sun and the cloud cover. So these are the two methods and all these information lead us to one question which is what is next? See, India is among the countries which is expected to have high wet bulb globe temperature values and many countries in the Middle East which experience high day temperatures during summer mandatorily declare a work break. A three-month midday break begins at 12.30 p.m. and ends at 3 p.m. in the UAE. And other countries with similarly high day temperatures also have a provision for work breaks. See, the months of April and May have seen some of the hottest days on record in India. Working conditions in India have to be revised quickly to factor in the hotter days. See, the National Disaster Management Authority, that is the NDMA, had called for revised guidelines for heat wave alerts. And this should be region specific. And that is all about this article discussion. In this discussion, we saw what is a heat wave. Qualitatively, it is a condition of air temperature which becomes fatal to human body. But quantitatively, it is defined based on temperature thresholds. See, heat warnings will be issued by IMD 
the temperature is expected to cross 40 degrees celsius in case of plains 30 degrees celsius in case of hilly areas and 37 degrees celsius in case of coastal regions and these conditions have to be met at two stations at a subdivision of imd and heat wave will be declared on the second day and after that we saw how temperature influences human body see hypothalamus in human body manages the production and loss of heat the heat is lost by radiation, convection, conduction and evaporation of sweat. See the conduction, radiation and convection requires temperature differential but the evaporation requires water vapor pressure differential. And we saw that high relative humidity, reduced cardiac output, reduced air circulation will lead to abnormal rise of body temperature that will result in life threatening heat stroke. And we saw data from the Indian Labour Organization which says that India has been the worst victim of heat stress with a loss of 4.3 working hours in 1995. And after that we saw two methods which measure the impact of heat on human body. The first one is heat stress index which includes factors such as temperature, humidity, sunlight and its impact on human body. And the second method is wet bulb globe temperature. It includes factors like temperature in direct sunlight, wind speed, humidity, angle of sun and cloud cover. And finally, we ended our discussion by stating the need for work breaks in India because India is among the countries which is expected to have high wet bulb globe temperature values. And we also saw that National Disaster Management Authority had called for revised guidelines for heat wave alerts. And with these points in mind, now let us move on to the next article discussion. Now let us take up this final article. See, day before yesterday, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman announced a sharp cut in the central excise duty on fuel prices amid the surging inflation, that is the increasing inflation. By doing so, the price of petrol will come down by 9.5 rupees, while the diesel will be cheaper by 7 rupees. And for this to happen, the central excise duty on petrol has been cut by 8 rupee per litre and the same on diesel has been cut by 6 rupees per litre. The government says that it will lose 1 lakh crore rupees by taking the cut on the central excise duties. But still, the government believes that this move will address the rising inflation. See, the minister also urged states to implement a similar cut and pass on the benefit to the common man. So, with this background, first let us see how taxes shared with respect to petroleum products and then we'll see what is the news. First of all, see this table here. This table gives you the breakup of both the petrol and diesel price in Delhi as on October 16, 2021. So what are all the components here? The first one is price charged to dealers and the next one is excise duty. This is levied by the centre as given in the table. The third one is dealer commission and the fourth one is sales tax levied by state. So these are all the components of price. All these includes the final retail price which is the price at which the petrol and diesel is sold in the market. An important thing to note here is that excess duty which is levied by the centre is uniform across the country but the sales tax will vary from state to state. Now coming back to the excise duty again, though the central taxes that is the excise duty they are levied by the centre, it will have only 59% of the revenue from these taxes. The remaining 41% of the revenue is required to be devolved to the state governments as per the recommendation of 15th finance commission. So the 41% of the revenue has to be given to the state government by the centre. See these devolved taxes are untied in nature. That is, the states can spend them according to their own discretion. See, the excise duty levied on petrol and diesel consists of two broad components. The first one is the tax component, that is the basic excise duty. The second one is the cess and surcharge component. See, of these two components, only the revenue generated from the tax component is given to states. Revenue generated by the centre from any cess or surcharge is not given to states, that is it is not devolved to states. Currently, agriculture, infrastructure and development says and road and infrastructure says are levied on the sale of petrol and diesel in addition to surcharge. See, this is very important, this is a fact. What all says are levied on petrol and diesel? 
it is the agriculture infrastructure and development cis the other one is road and infrastructure cis so what we saw in this excise duty only the tax component is given to the states the center retains the cis and surcharge component so this is the case until the day before yesterday on saturday finance minister mrs nirmala sita raman announced a sharp cut in the central excise duty on fuel prices but there were lot of questions what are those questions whether this will affect the devolution of taxes to the states to clarify this while talking to the reporters union finance minister has said that the entire duty reduction in petrol and diesel had been done out of the road and infrastructure cess component of the tax levied on petroleum products so what does this mean this means that the entire burden of the tax cut was hence being borne by the center see solely the price of petrol has to be reduced but if the cut is made on state's tax the devolution of taxes to the state will be affected so without touching the basic excise duty that is the tax component of the excise duty the price of both petrol and diesel has been reduced by cutting the road and infrastructure cess see this basic excise duty will only be shared with the states the cess will be retained by the center we saw earlier right so if the cut has been made in the road and infrastructure cess this won't affect the taxes which are shared with the state governments and with this we have come to the end of the discussion in this discussion we saw the split of petrol and diesel retail prices and after that we saw the central tax which is the excise duty levied by the center and we saw the sharing of the excise duty we saw that 59% of the revenue is kept by the center the remaining 41% is given to the state governments and as per the recommendations of 15th finance commission and after that we saw two components one is the tax component basic excise duty which will be shared with the state governments the next one is the cess and surcharge component which will not be shared with the state governments and the cess includes agriculture infrastructure and development cess road and infrastructure cess and with these points in mind now let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion today in this practice prelims question discussion session we have four prelims questions we'll solve them one by one see the first question here it is a quiz question for you consider the following statements look out circulars are initiated only by the central bureau of investigation and interpol statement 2 look out circulars cannot be modified or withdrawn you have to identify the correct statement here see we saw everything about look out circulars it will be easy for you try this question and post your answer in the comment section now moving on to the second question which of the following countries is not a member of rcep see in the discussion itself we saw india is not a member of rcep so here the right option is option a see the regional comprehensive economic partnership that is the rcep of asia and pacific signed the mega trade deal among 10 southeast asian countries and the five fta partners and those five fta partners include australia china japan new zealand and south korea while the deal was moving towards its final stage india chose to pull out at the 11th hour 7 years after joining the negotiation so here the correct answer is option a india now let us take this third question which of the following are the favorable conditions for heat wave transportation or prevalence of hot dry air over a region absence of moisture in the upper atmosphere the sky should be practically cloudless and large amplitude anticyclonic flow over the area we have to choose the correct answer here see the favorable conditions for heat waves includes all these four statements see taking statement 1 transportation or prevalence of hot dry air over a region know that there should be a region of warm dry air and appropriate flow pattern for transporting hot air over the region and regarding statement 2 absence of moisture in the upper atmosphere should be there because the presence of moisture restricts the temperature rise now the third statement the sky should be practically cloudless this is to allow maximum insulation over the region and it also should have large amplitude anticyclonic flow over the area 
See, heat waves generally develop over the northwest India and they spread gradually eastwards and southwards but not westwards since the prevailing winds during the season are westerly to northwesterly. But on some occasions, heat wave may also develop over any region in situ under the favorable conditions. So, here what is the correct answer? The correct option here is option B, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only. Now, let us take up this final question. Consider the following statements. Cess is a tax on tax that is imposed by the central government for a particular reason and is imposed before the government receives the sufficient funds for that reason. The surcharge is a fee added to any tax that has already been paid. Which of the above statements is or are incorrect? Let us see whether any of these statements are incorrect or not. Taking the first statement, see in simple terms, SS is a tax on tax. The Indian government levies says on the tax liability including surcharge and it is used for a specific purpose. For example, Indian government collect a says on education and utilizes it specifically for that purpose alone, that is for the education. Moreover, this says applies to all taxpayers. Further, says taxes go to the Consolidated Fund of India. So, it is vital to note that SS must be applicable for that purpose alone for which it is charged. So, from this we know that statement 1 is correct. Now, coming to the second statement, a surcharge applies to those persons whose income is more than 50 lakhs. See, this money is not collected for any specific cause but can be used for any reason as the union government sees fit. Interestingly, it is applicable on the tax payable and not on the total income. This collection also goes to the Consolidated Fund of India and can be used for any purpose. So, here both the statements are correct. So, what is the correct option here? Option D, neither 1 nor 2. And with this last prelims practice question, we have come to the end. If you have any queries related to the articles that we discussed today, post your query in the comment section. Don't forget to post your answer for the quiz question. And if you find the video useful, like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankar A.S. Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.